It's December 31st, 2018. I should be preparing dinner for my family as I'm hosting for them that night. But instead, I'm collapsed on a bundle on the floor, sobbing. On the surface, it would appear that the upset has erupted over the lack of butternut squash for the soup. But as the tears flow, the words, I can't cope with the pace of my life, tumbles out of my mouth. It was burnout. This brings me to the collective exhaustion and burnout that we're seeing and experiencing right now, and to our decreasing capacity to self-regulate. Now, before I continue, I just want to explain what I mean by self-regulation, because it is central to this whole discussion. So essentially, it's our ability to respond to the demands of everyday life without either feeling overwhelmed or without feeling like we're shutting down. It's the ability to remain unflustered in spite of the challenges that come our way. It's also the ability to move fluidly between different states, between the states of action, rest, and balance. This is what it means to be resilient. But self-regulation requires energy. So picture this. Imagine you have had an absolute stinker of a day. Everything that could have gone wrong did. And all you want to do now is go home and chill. But you get home and you realize that the cat has puked up on your new carpet. How do you react? Or imagine a similar situation. You've had a terrible day. Again, you're knackered. All you want to do is go home and decompress. But you hear your kids calling you again and again and again and again and again. And all you want to do is scroll on social media for a little bit. But no. How do you react? Or a similar situation. Again, you're knackered and you've had such a terrible day that you think, well, you know what, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to order some takeaway, some food in. Uh, but then when your food arrives, you realize that the hungry monkey driver has spilt your curry all over the bag, and it's just a soggy mess. How do you react? I don't know about you, but I'd probably lose it. I'd probably snap. And on any other day, at any other time, I'd be able to brush these things off. But not today, because self-regulation requires energy. So imagine now what happens when globally we are battered by unprecedented revolutionary currents that come sweeping through our, through our lives. Imagine what happens when 2020 and 2021 hit our nervous systems. Uh, and I guess you don't really need to imagine. You can just hang out on any social media platform for a little bit and just see what the vibe is like in there. Or, you know, when you speak to people at work or socially, you can get a sense of what's going on for them. And what we're seeing is more and more that people are feeling really, really anxious, fearful, disconnected. Others are fed up and, you know, maybe just resigned to whatever it is that they're experiencing. Others are fed up and pissed off. They're reacting to the changes in their environment from a place of contention, conflict, and defensiveness. So these are the kinds of behaviors and states that we get stuck in when we can't self-regulate. We either get stuck in states of rigidity, where we're disconnected and where we cannot connect with other people's perspectives, or we're stuck in a place of chaos where we're in this energy of conflict all the time. Now, if you think about it, all of this was there before. The anxiety, the fear, the rage, the fed upness, it was all there before, but kind of flying under the radar. What the past couple of years and COVID have done is to shine a spotlight on all of this. So as we scramble to do things the old way, as we scramble to get back to normal, maybe it's time to acknowledge that normal wasn't really working for us. 
I mean, it certainly wasn't working for me when I was almost pushed over the edge by a butternut squash. So this brings us to the backdrop against which all of this has happened. Because our feelings, our behaviors, our moods, they don't exist in a vacuum. We need to analyze them in the context within which they manifest, which brings us to our systems, the systems within which we operate, our corporate health system, legal, educational, our systems of governance, politics, and finance. By and large, these systems run like a machine, and we are the cogs that keep the wheel turning. They're viewed as inanimate and static setups, completely disconnected from the rhythms of nature. And as a result, they've got a really limited inner capacity for change. So when change comes, as it inevitably will, it's experienced as a kind of push, a pressure from the outside. As and, more, and as more and more pressure is exerted on those individual cogs in the system, the harder it is to be in the system because we're not built to hold a state of tension continuously. That's not what it means to be resilient. Remember, resilience is about flowing, moving fluidly between the states of action, rest, and balance. And as the pressure grows, more is demanded of the cogs in the system. And because the system doesn't have those inbuilt resources to expand and contract, in relationship and in connection to the envi its environment and the current climate, usually we get one of two responses. So one is submission, which is basically a recipe for burnout. And two, there's resistance. So there's resistance from within the system to the change that's coming. And that brings about an implosion. And if you think about it, There's hardly a week that goes by in the, the news where you don't hear about industrial action, protests, demonstrations, locally or internationally. I mean, in London, just a few weeks back, thousands and thousands of people took to the streets to demonstrate. In Canada, truckers are making their own statement. But the fact is that wherever you look in the world, there's unrest. And what we're seeing is that the structures that once held us in place are crumbling. And we need to ask ourselves why this might be. Perhaps it's because these constructs don't honor the truth that we are part of an interconnected and interdependent web of being. With a system that's tiered and hierarchical, that has people hyper-focused on individual success, And it's this, you know, this very drive for climbing the ladder for achievement and success that keeps us disassociating and disconnecting from the fact that we are living in a chronic state of dysregulation. And what comes with that is a deep lack of fulfillment. Equally troubling in taking the default position that in a system there are either winners or losers. We bypass from the truth that we either win together or we lose together. Okay, so, even though all this talk of systemic collapse and breakdown may seem troubling, there is a silver lining. Through the destabilization of these structures, It allows light to pour in through the cracks, and it brings us to a choice point. Pythagoras said that choices are the hinges of destiny, and it's these choice points, when honored, that create a gap in awareness. Sobbing on the floor that New Year's Eve was my own personal experience of this gap. And had I not worked with that pain, and that discomfort, I'd never have set up my own business, and I wouldn't be here talking to you about this today. So we can refer to these choice points in different ways. I like to call them gaps, 
glitches in the system that need to be reprogrammed from the ground up. But you'd also be fully in your right to call it an oh shit moment. Because it's scary to look around and to think, okay, this isn't working. I invested every single thing that I had into building this, but this doesn't work for me anymore. And then to add insult to injury, you don't have a bloody clue where you're going and how you're moving forward. It's the caterpillar in the chrysalis, disintegrating into a pile of goop. It doesn't know it's going to become a butterfly. All it sees is certain death and annihilation. So you'd be fully in your right to call it an oh shit moment. And yet, it's these gaps that help us break out of autopilot, out of automaticity. Whereas before, the processes in our brain and in our behaviors were pre-programmed and predictable, now we're gifted with the opportunity for self-awareness and for self-reflection. Whereas before we were responding to the present through the lens of the past, preventing us from really moving forward, now we get to become intentional about what we want to create and how. To do this, we need to come into a space of stillness, a space of self-regulation, rest, and surrender. And note, by no means is the state of surrender a passive one. Submission is passive. Surrender is an active state where you hold the dynamic tension between honoring where you are now and honoring where you want to be. And it's in holding that tension that you're able to fluidly move between your present and your future in right relationship to your own internal rhythms in right relationship and connection to the rhythms around you of your environment. No pushing. But that requires connection, attunement, sensing to your environment. That's how it happens. And all this connection and presence, isn't that what it means to be alive? So now as we self-regulate, in this space of stillness and surrender, we're able to bring a different part of the brain online. And because we're no longer operating from a place of fear or from a place of survival, we can begin to hold states of expansiveness, states of imagination, invention, innovation, creation. The seeds of change reside in this space. And it's in the gap that we find the crack in the universe through which the future arrives. Thank you. <laughs>